Hi everyone, this is Telios from The Data Scientist. Today we're very lucky to have Sean Dipnal with us from South Africa. Uh, Sean, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so, so firstly, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my name's Sean. Uh, I'm the founder CEO of the Explore group of companies. Uh, in that portfolio, there are four businesses. There's the Data Science Academy, uh, which teaches data science at scale, which I'm sure we'll discuss today. Then we've got two product businesses. One's a utility tech building, you know, AR solutions for utility players. Other one's an insure tech, you know, AR underwriting systems for insurance companies. And then we've got an offshoring uh, business that offshores data scientists into, into the UK. I'm personally an actuary, so I sort of grew up doing data science and insurance, you know, pricing insurance policies, you know, the capital requirements, reserving. So lots of, you know, building algorithms and predictions of large data sets. Um, yeah, that's me. Perfect. So how many years have you been in the space of data science education? Uh, so we launched four years ago in South Africa, Cape Town. Um, so this is our fourth year teaching. Uh, we mm -hmm. started out on campus in Cape Town, uh, 100 students. Uh, you know, three, four years later, there's now over a thousand students uh, across South Africa, online and on campus. Uh, and then obviously moving into the UK and Africa in July. Mm. Very impressive. And uh, what are some of the general um, themes in data science education that, you, that you've observed over the years? Uh, because in London, at least what I've observed is initially there were no degrees in data science, as in master's in data science, and then this became a thing. Then we've seen many boot camps pop up over the last few years. Um, what are some of the things you've, um, you know, you've seen in South Africa, but also in other countries and continents? Yeah, so the, the big themes in South Africa, which I presume are the same, in, in, as you mentioned, I mean, the first thing is, you know, the demand for data scientists has grown exponentially in, in South African companies. Mm -hmm. There's a big demand for the skills and the supply of the skills just aren't matching it at all, right? Yeah. As you say, you know, five years ago in South Africa, there were no data science, anything, no, no courses, no degrees, no mm -hmm. boot camps, no diplomas. Interesting. Um, and that's when we sort of were founded, right? It was to sort of fill that massive gap. You know, the last three, four, five years, there have been uh, degrees and diplomas and postgrads, but very small supply, right? Like you might get in South Africa, three universities offering those and getting 120 data scientists coming through a year, which is like well below the 50,000 jobs uh, we have mm -hmm. in the country. Um, so that sort of gap has is, is, is continued to grow actually, even though the courses have been offered. And what we have found uh, is the courses that are offered at the universities are quite theoretical and mm -hmm. not that practical, right? So, so I guess bootcamp is probably the term to describe uh, uh, the wave of, of practical sort of hands-on courses. Yeah. Um, which, uh, I wouldn't so much say we're a bootcamp. I mean, we're a one-year full-time immersive uh, uh, course, but certainly bootcamp is bootcamp-esque, you know, very practical, solving problems, writing code and teams. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you think traditional university education on this topic compares against boot camps, and what are some of the pros and cons for someone who is considering this choice? Um, so firstly, I mean, I lectured at, at the university. A lot of our, our teachers are ex-lecturers and PhDs. So, you know, I love, I love the acad academe and, you know, the sort of uh, university mm -hmm. environment. You know, I guess the, uh, not a pro or a con, but it's, it's very theoretical. And, you know, you, you learn matrix multiplication, you learn back propagation, you understand the, the mathematics, the true mathematics of, of uh, neural networks, deep learning, you know, data science. Yeah. Um, but to some extent, when you get into the real world, like that, this doesn't really matter, right? Like it's, you know, can you quickly spin up an instance and write code to solve a problem? And, and often the theory isn't that useful. Um, having said that, you know, really difficult problems, you know, somebody who's very theoretical mm -hmm. and principled and conceptual, you know, with universities, a marker of that is often advantaged. But yeah, for us, the, the, the sort of overriding pro of what we do and others like us is you you teach people how to solve problems in the real world and they can land in the world of work and add value from day one. Whereas mm -hmm. university, it's often a, you know, they come into the world of work and they can't do anything because they like, haven't really learned anything useful. Yeah, I see what you mean. And uh, how, how long do you think someone should be in a boot camp? Because university programs usually are, have a certain conditions, like a master's needs to be one or two years, depending on the country you're in. Bachelor's three or four years are similar. What's your opinion? Uh, I mean, interesting again. So, so our, our, so your first question, how long should a bootcamp be for us? You know, I mean, you can have a six week bootcamp or a three day bootcamp, but that implies lots of sort of prior condition conditions, right? Mm -hmm. You've got like a proper data science background yeah. already. 
for us to really do this properly for most people, six months is the minimum, right? Six months full time gets you really sort of into the into the the details. Um, the sort of part two of your question is is you know what what is your uh, uh, sort of entry requirements? I mean, we found that uh, you know we, we don't have any entry requirements other than a matric matriculation, which is sort of a I think like A levels uh, in the UK. Um, okay. And uh, on average, people who've got degrees who do our courses do better, but people who have just got A-levels, some of them do even better than the people with uh, uh, PhDs and masters. So mm -hmm. we've got probably every year, 30% of our top 20 students are just straight mm -hmm. A-levels. Um, a lot of them win hackathons, a lot of them, um, yeah, just, just really shine. So uh, I guess sort of a long way around, what I'm trying to say is that uh, having a degree is a good sort of marker of you being able to be a good data scientist, but you can certainly be a good data scientist and, and sort of uh, uh, learn the skills with just your A-levels. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. And, um, and have you seen any changes in education as the result of uh, COVID? Uh, I mean, absolutely. So I guess firstly, <laughs> the, the campus has disappeared. So yeah. everybody's uh, uh, gone online work, learning from home. Um, you know, another big thing we've seen is that now people are working from home. So mm -hmm. five years ago, you needed to be, you know, drive into the office and work at the office. Now you can work from your garage into anywhere in the world. So, yes. so the two big changes, I guess, is, you know, it's, it's more, it's more uh, remote online, the learning, um, and then the ability to work anywhere is bigger, right? So the sort of marketplace opens up dramatically. So for South Africa, where we've got quite a small market, our data scientists now have a, like a bigger work opportunity, you know, delivering into UK and Europe. You know, mm -hmm. another, another sort of thing that pops up is, you know, in our world, there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning. So you'd be sort of in teams around a desk solving problems. Whereas now, you know, you're isolated in your, in your, in your bedroom and that peer-to-peer -peer has sort of lost, it's been lost a bit, right? Which is a, mm -hmm. which is a negative. And uh, do you think that some of these changes are here to stay? For sure. No, for sure. So I think, uh, I think the, the remote working is here to stay, or at least the hybrid version. So again, you know, for, for anyone your job, the job market opens to the whole world. So instead of, you know, 1 million job opportunities, now 500 million job opportunities. So I think that's, uh, that's there to stay. Um, and then, yeah, certainly, certainly, you know, learning from home. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, maybe you'll go into the campus one, two days a week, but learning from home will, will certainly persist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think because of that, you'll see uh, tuition prices dropping. I think these massive, uh, overly priced universities are going to, uh, reduce their prices when, when you know, you're just logging into a computer and sort of doing some work online. Okay, that's very interesting. So can you name any examples? Uh, have you seen like any programs like in uh, like prestigious universities dropping prices? Or is it more like the second tier ones? Uh, I mean, I haven't seen it. So I've got a lot of friends who, who, who went to Harvard last year or went to Stanford, you know, and they sort mm -hmm. of spent, uh, I don't know, what the, 10, 20, $40,000 on this expensive course. It is expensive. <laughs> in their bedroom, just reading PDFs, right? It's like, geez, $40,000 to read a textbook and PDF and have a, a, a sort of a webinar. Yeah. That just is a complete ripoff. So, so would they do that again? No. So I don't, I don't think those prices in a, in a remote world can, can persist, right? They're going to have to drop because uh, it's just not, just doesn't make sense. But, what if, but what's going to happen if, for example, there is some value in peer-to-peer -peer learning? So actually, they're going to still going to there's still going to be this type of learning, expensive programs, uh, which are going to be complementary to other types of programs. Yeah, no, sure. So I think peer-to-peer -peer is valuable and will stay, and absolutely there will be those, uh, uh, and they can and will be uh, costly. Mm, mm, yeah, I mean, I think that there's no clear answer to that. It's like uh, people have their own opinions and because things have been opening and closing uh, every few months in different countries, I guess, uh, uh, you, you know, it's, it's difficult to predict what, what's going to happen. So that, I think this is a bit like a large experiment. Um, yeah. And uh, besides data science, um, are you, what do you think of um, other related skills like data engineering? or MLOps, which recently has become a popular area. Do you think that someone who's learning data science need to be proficient in this? Or is this more like for someone who has a certain level of experience or more like for software developers? What's your opinion? Yes, I mean, that, that's a great question and a long answer to it. So we, we, we set up our Explore Data Science Academy four years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, the narrative was, you know, sexiest career in the world, you know, highest paying job uh, across the yeah. globe. 
Um, and, and, you know, alongside that, we've got a, a product business that builds technology in, in, in the UK. And we just threw, you know, 50 data scientists into that team. And we realized, you know, actually a lot of the work, particularly up front, is the data engineering, right? It's sort of yeah. uh, streaming the data, cleaning, aggregating the data lakes, the, you know, all that stuff. And a lot of the data scientists end up having to learn data engineering and, and doing data engineering work. Some of them loved it. Some of them didn't love it. Um, you know, uh, and that was a common theme across clients. We then, I think a year ago, launched our data engineering course because actually data engineering is, is as important, if not more important than the data science uh, job because, you know, you got to get that done first before you can do the science. Um, so, yeah, so, so that was sort of step one. Step two, as you say, I mean, a lot of our, our, our team is, is doing ML ops, right? Which is uh, yeah. almost a continuation of the engineering and we're launching that course too. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, uh, you know, this universe has, has even within data science, you're an NLP expert, computer vision, you might be a sort of a database, like there's, mm -hmm. there's hundreds, of, hundreds of data jobs uh, in the job family. Um, and yeah, we, we, we've, we've learned to do it in the real world and are sort of creating syllabuses or have syllabuses uh, in our academy to teach them. And if you had to give some advice to someone um, who just graduated from university and they're thinking to pursue a career in... Um, data science or the field of data? I mean, what would you advise them? Yeah, I mean, firstly, you know, do it. It's, it's a good, <laughs> good, good idea. It's uh, lots of fun, uh, you know, cool problems, cool people, uh, you know, great job opportunities, you know, good good earnings. So it, it's a great idea. I mean, the, the advice would be, um, you know, gen genuinely, I think, I think a degree is a good foundation, particularly one in the sciences. Uh, to go from there to the world of work is tricky, right? And you don't have much real world experience to do a boot camp, whether it's a three day, three month or one year boot camp, uh, I think is a great idea. I mean, that, that sort of gives mm -hmm. you the, the, the sort of real world coding experience working in teams that when you, A, a you're going to get a better job at a high salary. So that money you pay for that boot camp mm -hmm. is paid back. Mm -hmm. And then B, when you land in the job, you're going to be competent and adding value and, you know, sort of a star. So, so yeah. Yeah, definitely that would be sort of one piece of advice. Another piece of advice would be, you know, data science is, 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 is as much your soft skills than your hard skills and really spending time, uh, you know, thinking through and reading up around, uh, you know, agile, um, uh, sort of lean, uh, you know, being collaborative, working in a team, uh, your communication skills, like mm -hmm. all those sort of things are, are fundamental to being a good data scientist. And if you, if you think you're just going to write code and be great, you're sort of missing half of the, half of the story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. And what advice would you give to someone who wants to start now? Like, what can they do on their own to prepare? Shall they go on, shall they go on Coursera? Uh, shall they learn Python? Shall they, I don't know, learn R? Shall they just start reading, um, I don't know, Bishop's, um, what was the name of the book on machine learning? I don't remember. We used to call it Bishop book when I was doing my master's. Yeah. Uh, should they study linear algebra if they don't have the background? Yeah. What would yeah, you advise? I, mean, uh, I guess all of the above, right? I mean, there's some great online courses, some of them free. So Coursera's got some free ones, right? You got to pay forty nine dollars for the for the certificate, but but you know, just do it for free. Mm -hmm. um, lots of free Python uh, material. You know, Data Camp's quite a good resource. I think it's ninety nine dollars a month. Um, edX has got a lot of cool free stuff. Yeah. So so basically, you know, install Jupyter, uh, a sort of a coding notebook. You know. Do those courses, get some freeware, start writing code, uh, enter Kaggle, you know, start sort of doing competitions and competing. Uh, yeah, I mean, just just mm. yeah, sort of on a daily basis, uh, um, just like learning a language on a daily basis, you know, write code and just never stop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, I guess there are so many ways someone can do to like start preparing themselves for for data science, and maybe that's also a good thing to try out to see whether you really like it, right, before you commit yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great point. I mean, to, to sign up for a four-year degree or an expensive boot camp, rather spend, you know, a few yeah. weekends hacking around and seeing whether you, you know, you get addicted or not. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Cool. All right. So thanks, Sean. I think this has been very illuminating. Uh, you know, in our audience, we have many people who are thinking to follow a, a career in data science. So I'm sure this is going to be very, very useful. Uh, any last thoughts before we, we leave? Yeah, I mean, just just uh, um, again, it's uh, an incredibly rewarding career. I mean, I, I I see myself waking up each morning and it's like playing computer games. You got this, <laughs> yeah, 
you know, probably <laughs> I know what you mean. Board and a bunch of friends and your headsets and you're just, you know, you're just trying to sort of have fun with your mates solving complex problems <laughs> that never end. I mean, it's just a, it's a really fun, really fun pursuit. <laughs> yeah, good point. I know this feeling. So thank you, Sean. This was great. Thanks a lot. Brilliant. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks everyone for being here with us uh, and make sure to uh, check out the datascientist.com for more content on AI, data science and blockchain. Thank you very much and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.